Welcome to CX Nexus, a podcast for customer experience professionals who want to level up their careers and their business. We're here to explore how collaboration, cooperation, and community can help your organization thrive. Each episode, we're going to have a lively conversation with professionals across a wide variety of roles to explore what they do, where they found success, and to share the best lessons they've learned so that you can too. And who are we? We're two experienced community professionals who believe that collaboration is the key to success. We worked at companies large and small, building user communities and connecting with teams and users across the business. And we want to bring the conversations that we've had with our partners to you. Hello and welcome to CX Nexus. I'm Nicole Saunders here with my co-host. Chris Detzel. Chris, how are you doing this week? I'm good. I like how we do that. It's just, I'm Chris Detzel and you're Nicole, you know, whatever. So. It's like we've been doing this for a while or something. We have, honestly. We've been doing it for a really long time in some way or fashion, right? So today... We wanted to talk a little bit of something a little different, and it's around this thinking around like you and I own community and within an organization, online communities and all the programs that go with those, with the community. One of the things that I think community leaders, I wouldn't say everyone, but a lot of folks have a hard time in connecting community in to the rest of the organization. So today, you and I think we should talk a little bit about, you know, how we might connect community into cells and in, in, into what they call cells plays and how, and what that means and, and how we're yeah. trying to make sure we're not in our own silos, you know? Well, and this is a key topic, right? Because of course, every episode of our podcast, we're trying to explore intersections with different parts of business, but I think sales is one in particular that community professionals tend to avoid, right? Yeah. And the reason is that we know that users aren't going to come show up at a community event or in a forum if they're just getting sold to. That's not why yeah. they're there. They're there to connect. They're there to do other things. They don't want to be constantly pitched at that's going to disrupt that engagement. However, it's still important that we think about how community fits in with the sales and the funnel and all of it. Why marketing exists is to help drive sales. The business yeah. is driven by the sales. And so I think that there is that needle to thread of not being salesy, but not avoiding connecting your community and your sales motion. Yeah, and I think that you got to figure out where your community plays. I, I believe that there's a few different areas. I do believe that to some degree, community can play in the net new space, but you really mm -hmm. have to create programs for the sales organization to do that. We're not going to talk about that specific part today necessarily. Although maybe we get into that with the sales plays that we'll talk about. What I'm thinking about, and Nicole, tell me if I'm wrong or, hey, look, you're way off, but is more around that expansion piece. Because that's where yeah. I think community plays really well, because think about it. Community, on, people come in from a product community. So let's be real, a B2B kind of product specific community. People come into a community because they have an issue or they have, they need help with solving an issue or want to figure out how others might have resolved this issue or, hey, I didn't know you're using this piece of the product. Tell me more about that kind of product. So for example, when you look at my community, one of the programs and look, I've spoke about this a lot, but is our, I call them community shows or webinars. All of that is all connected into our sales pipeline and connected to Tableau and tells me how much revenue or influence pipeline that the community webinars and shows are producing. This is different. And, and the outcome is that, right? Like we want to make sure that we can provide influence pipeline. So that's the outcome. But how are we driving salespeople to use these live community webinars that we're doing and or even afterwards? Because when I think about expansion, like they're already using the product, but there's other parts of the product that maybe they don't have or maybe they can use that we want to talk about, not necessarily to sell them, although it'd be great. But if you get, if you let them know about it, then why not? Yeah, at some point, maybe they sell. Then that's where I think the sales plays come in. And I'll let you define the sales plays here in a second, but if you feel comfortable with that. But basically, that's where the sales plays come in to say, hey, we have these existing customers that probably want to come to this webinar. So let's tell them about this webinar if they're not on the community. Let's go deeper within the organization to tell them about this live webinar. But let's also look at the other pieces because there could be a there could be a website 
you know, on our main website that shows a nice product page that tells you all about it, or there might be an event that comes up that marketing's doing. So how does that all play together and how do you right. wrap that in a nice little bow when you well, do that? And to your point, Chris, expansion is such an important part for communities to be yep. thinking about because we can influence it in so many ways. Ideally, if we're engaging users, they're learning more about the product, there's going to be some natural expansion or upsell or cross-sell as they need to add seats or they need to add new features or they need yep. to move up a tier of what plan type they're on. And so it's so important that we get familiar with these things and think about it and understand how our business is thinking about it so that we can be proactive about the way that the community plays into it rather than, I think, historically, a lot of communities have been a little bit more passive about their influence on expansion where they're building those relationships. We talk about how it influences customer retention and things like that. Yeah. But I think a lot of community professionals are like, I grew the community. Somebody else's job is to connect the dots into the other aspects of the customer journey or to close those sales. And there's no reason that we can't be helping with that and influencing it. And you think about, just like you were just saying, there's a whole ecosystem of things that every company offers their customers. There are yeah. probably webinars coming out of multiple teams. There's yeah. probably trainings. There's probably meetups. There's all sorts of content. And you want your community to be the central sort of clearing house for that, where people can access all of those pieces. But let's focus on this piece of sales plays. So you and I have both been thinking about how we integrate our communities with the sales plays at our companies. We were talking a little bit in the pre-call that sometimes this is also the term campaigns can be somewhat interchangeable. Some companies use sales plays and campaigns differently. Some of them are very similar. But it's this idea of making sure we've got a playbook or a strategy of how are we going to communicate things to users, get them the right information at the right time, and use that to push them along a sales funnel or conversion funnel? How are you thinking about sales plays at Relteo? So glad you asked. I think that one is, I really wasn't thinking about sales plays, to be honest. I didn't even know what it was until. Had other things to work on first, right? A couple weeks ago. <laughs> that, but it was also like, we were calling it in marketing campaigns. So marketing does mm -hmm. these digital campaigns around certain parts of the product or certain different things. And then, and then sales was also doing what they call campaigns. And to them, a campaign was using email cadences to send out emails about a specific thing, right? Tomorrow they'll send out an email that introduces this kind of thing. A week, if they haven't replied, then sends out another email that says a certain thing. And then, so that, that's what they were calling campaigns, but they realized with really, really smart people, Hey, look, we're all calling this campaign and it's really confusing because so they decided to call it sales or sales playbooks or sell play sales plays. And so, so now that's settled and we all know what that is, but what happens is you've got all this really good content from marketing. You get all this really good content from sales. You get this content from community. You got, it's all, everybody has really good content, but it's not always completely connected. And as I've been thinking about this for a while, and one is you can't do this by yourself, right? Sales isn't going to listen to you if you say, hey, you should use put community in this thing. And so what I did was, and I think it's important all, for everyone. I'm not a sales guru. I'm not a, you know, they, we have a training organization that sits in sales and that trains our customers and our partners and our employees on all of these things. And there's people within that training department that is, does sales enablement and focuses in on sales enablement. So what I did was there's this really nice person and she is this program manager that can help program manage the shit out of stuff. Right. I was like crazy. So I was like, Hey, look, you're really good at this thing. Why don't you come in and help with this expansion kind of big initiative that we have going on around that. And she did, and now she's created something really cool and she's run off with it, right? And so now we have these weekly meetings or so, and we talk a little bit about, because she's got this nice little spreadsheet that links every single sales play, that links all the marketing campaigns and all these things. And then she has these documents to say, hey, this email says, this email says that, this is the date we did these things. And so one, it was trying to find the right person to help me do that. And, and it becomes persons, so it's many people. Now, and there's a lot of people very interested in what's going on. And so you can lose kind of 
control or at least the understanding of everything that's going on. So I know I, th that's how we identify sales plan. That's how I've started really thinking about how you embed community, this, in this case, community kind of stuff. Like our sales organizations now, I just spoke to our, one of our VP of sales, our VPs today, and, and a VP today of sales. And they're like, look, community is so important to what we're doing from a sales standpoint. And this is probably the, the first or second year that I've really heard that from salespeople because the thing that you said earlier about community professionals, including myself, has had a hard time driving into the sales organization. I'm not saying it's perfect, but what I'm saying is I I push myself to do it because I just don't have all that knowledge in there. Here I am thinking about pre-pipeline, moving moving this from pre to, to post to all this pipeline talk and, and things that I've never really understood and, and knew. And now I'm not an expert, but I'm learning a ton. And I think it's key for community professionals, leaders to really just have to be in sales, but you have to show, you have to show that you can collaborate with folks like sales and marketing together and show your values. But if you're on a marketing team, like what they care about is pipeline. All they care about is the pipeline. That's it. So we have to care about that too. We do. Know. We could probably do a whole episode sometime on just how to learn things because I feel like part of being a community manager is knowing at least a little bit about darn near every part of the business and every business function because you touch yeah. so much of it. But coming back to the sales place, one of the key things I think that defines it and makes it a little bit different from a campaign is that it's a repeatable action, right? We mm -hmm. can say, hey, whenever there's a community webinar, we're going to market it this way and we're going to generate leads this way and we're going to track it and do follow up this way and connecting those pieces together or even moreover, seeing how if what you're working with fits into something pre-existing or something bigger that the sales of the marketing organization has planned out and making sure that you're really pulling all of those pieces together it can be a big job. You really have to understand what your business's sales strategy is and what their plays are. So yeah. you can figure out where it makes sense for you to plug into that. The goal of these things really typically is to try to get a lot of leads, get a lot of opportunities, get a lot of expansion opportunities, that kind of thing. And so I think about the fact that like our community events typically are focused on basically support issues, right? Yeah. Things that yeah. people that already use the product yeah. need help with. It may not be a new feature. It may not be a big expansion opportunity. But we know that by enabling them to do the things we need to do and showing them where they could be getting additional value out of the product, it's going to help them stick around. And we're going to create that relationship where we can expand. What we historically haven't been as good at is actually tracking that and figuring out, okay, when is the right time yep. for an AE to reach out or to have a conversation like that? And so I think that those are some of the pieces that everybody needs to look at and plug into it. So Chris, when you needed to learn about the sales plays at your organization, how did you do that? Who did you talk to? How did you start learning about that sales motion? One is you got to start talking to salespeople. AEs you do. or renewal reps. Gotta go make some friends. Have some coffee. You've got to talk to the the leaders within that. You got to understand your own kind of marketing organization and look, it, it just takes time. Like I I feel like I've had so many conversations since January of this year. So it's what, Ju almost July, it's late June. And, and so I think it's just a matter of being alone those meetings. You got to push yourself to drive those meetings. I have to, uh, I was just told today that, hey, look, Chris, in July, in the July, you're going to have to run uh, the go-to-market kind of expansion call or meeting, right? So we'll have an hour to kind of present on what we're doing from an expansion standpoint and how it's connecting together and everything else. And so this is why it's very interesting to me right now. It's because I have to do it. Talking about it helps. And I think that it's what we do best, right? Like it's building those relationships. Community leaders are really good at that, I think. And it's really just trying to dive into what problems they're, not just problems they're solving, but you can understand their lingo. You can understand what they're trying to do. And you can just mm -hmm. try to figure out, hey, what value can you bring? The thing that I own is community, right? And so I can bring and drive the programs that I have within community, but how do I start connecting that and say, hey, you guys are doing a campaign on the Databricks connector. I'm doing a live show on that too. 
why is it, can we add community? You, you know, I don't want to be accusatory because like people can't, people won't do it if you become accusatory. You just have to be open and say, hey, look, how do we connect it? If, you, if you're doing a email on the Databricks connector, we're doing a show on July 11th about it. And so the PM is going to go deep and, and show people how to do it, use it. There'll be demos and everything else. I could probably get a hundred people live on this show, 200, 100 to 200 people live asking questions and things like that. In a way you might have to sell it. I think it's just a matter of building those relationships, seeing how you can connect. And look, for me, people believe in community within the organization mostly, right? And so you have that going for you. And I think that's key as well is, has your community shown value in the first place? And something that you mentioned earlier, and I don't disagree at all. Like you said something about community, you go deep into the product, right? Like the existing features and everything else. We do that as well. But in my mind, you can do sh or webinars and things like that around new features because people want to know about those features, right? Even if it costs them something, hey, we get this data breaks connected. It does this and this, and it's going to help you do that, this, that, or the other. Is there a cost? Yeah, it's going to cost X. And if you have data for it, but if you have data bricks or snowflake or whatever, you're going to have to get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, this is what it is. Yeah, it's a small cost or whatever. But then people are like, oh, okay. And then they'll go to their boss and say, hey, I need this data bricks connector. That real TO has because it does this and this and that and the other. And it's so easy to connect and whatever, right? So you got to create the buzz. You got to create the excitement. You got to do all those things. Sorry, I, I got a little off, but I get very excited about this stuff. No, it's good. We all love the passion. So it sounds like one of the things that you and I are both thinking about in terms of connecting our sales plays is our community event, right? Yeah. Because, right. and I think it's because they're point in time things where you can point people to it. You can have them register for it. You can track it a little bit easier than pointing yeah. to a discussion space in an online forum. And I think that's where you're just seeing an interplay of promote mm. things in the online community. You have the event. And then you can do some follow-up and continue the conversation in the online community, have people move fluidly through those. When we think about those events, it seems like there's a lot of value in making sure that you are co-planning your event mm -hmm. with those other teams in mind so that it's not a, hey, here's a sales play we're running, or here's a campaign, or here's a product marketing thing. What are you guys doing? Let's cross-promote. But it's really a hey, what are the things that we need to cover in the next quarter? Which things should come out of which team? And how should we do that? And I think that if you start with that planning as a group from the beginning and that idea that we're all yeah. going to work together to facilitate the things that we need for our customers and for our prospects, it's a lot easier to fit your things into the campaign and those sales plays because you've actually planned the event in such a way that it is a part of that and not an add-on or an afterthought. I love that. And that, I'll, I'll be honest, like, that's not my forte. I'm... Did I, Chris? No, I, I think that's exactly right. And I think I've heard that at least 50 times in the last few years. I have. I, I think that doing that is so important. And I think you need somebody. Does it have to be you? I don't know. You, I think maybe. I also think that if you can find somebody that's a very good planner and organizer, because look, saying that's easy, but it's really hard to do. I don't know about you. Have you found, I'm trying to get this person from marketing, the PM, the a PM maybe, somebody from sales, somebody from training, to get them all together, a sales leader maybe or something. And then, hey, this is what I'm thinking. And then they have their opinions and you have your opinions. And then they, trying to gather all that is, and, and making it happen in a cohesive way is extremely difficult. It is. And where I think about it is at the end of the day, who are we as community professionals? Yep. We're relationship builders. We're here yep. to make connections. We're here, here to build relationships. And I think we tend to think about that a lot in terms of relationships with our community members. Mm -hmm. I did. But especially as a senior leader in a community, right. some of the most critical relationships you build are with your internal teams. Yeah. If you can build those relationships, it gets a lot easier to have those conversations about how you plug into things. I also always approach things from how can I help the other team? Mm. I try to never go in and start with, can you guys plug the community in this thing? But I yeah. try to go in with, what are you trying to accomplish? Who are you targeting? And what 
gaps do you have or what challenges do you have? And then I try to identify some places where I might be able to help. For example, if they're saying we have this great sales play come up, but we don't have a piece of content to anchor it around. I can go and say, well, you know what? I have this great piece of content. It's this community event that's coming up. Why don't we anchor it around that? I'll do the content generation. I'll put all of this together. If you will help me get people there and follow up with them afterward and figure out what the sales flow is or what the attribution yeah. model needs to be or something like that. And that tends to go over really well. It doesn't work every time for sure. But I think that if we start by building those internal relationships and then really go in with that mindset of how can I help, mm. knowing that they'll help us if we help them first, I think that can go a long way to really knocking down some of those silos and getting teams to work together more effectively. Yeah, and I, I absolutely, the kindness is the key. <laughs> and the way you said it is very kind. I think that's very good. Mm -hmm. and, and I do love that and, and truly believe that. I always... I remember uh, I used to work at this company called Forrester Research, and one of the analysts we took to, I was taking him to client sites and stuff, and we went to, to one client, and he goes, his French, and goes, Chris, kindness is a strategy, no? He goes, we all should be kindness, kind to people. Like, kindness is key. Yeah. And I love that. And as always, I'm not always kind. I need to be thinking like that. I, th I think the other piece, though, is do you have, you, you definitely have to go in there and help them um, do all these things that you said, because I, I think that's the most important thing. But I also think if you could figure out how to get high level, whether it's an executive or VP or something like that on your side that runs that area, if you can be at that level, that's going to be very important, right? Because then they, they can give you a rubber stamp. They can say, hey, Nicole, that runs community, does this thing. They're doing some awesome stuff. They can just say some words. And all automatically, people start listening a little bit more. And so I think, no, you got to show the value, but I think getting some of that leadership type of buy-in, it doesn't have to be an executive. It helps, but executives are all over the place, man. So you have to go one step lower sometimes to, to that maybe VP or senior VP level to, to maybe get some help. Well, I don't know. And speaking of buy-in, one of the things I think about is what are the potential impacts of doing this? Yeah. What happens when you start to coordinate your community and work, get into sales plays? You start to be able to really demonstrate the influence of community and it gives you some power and it gives you that ability to get more buy-in in your executives yeah. because you're showing that the community isn't just a nice to have, it's not just a ticket deflection channel, but that it's a place that can really help drive revenue for the business. And so if you're struggling to get buy-in from your senior leaders, lean into sales first yeah because if you can show that impact then you can get more buy-in to do maybe some of the more touchy-feely soft skill kinds of things that we all want to do with our communities to make people's lives easier and their days better and that kind of thing we tend to look at it the other way around a lot of new professionals tend to want to really be community first and sales comes later but you're going to get a lot more influence with your business if you can show the impact to the business. And it's not just a matter of metric, it's a matter of actually setting up where your community plays in a way that it can actually drive revenue. I, I think that's exactly right. And something that you mentioned is data and just tracking. And that is super important. And uh, to, to some degree, an extreme. With that said, it can't be the only thing that you do. I've heard sales leaders, right. even as a recent, say, hey, Look, all those beam counters were, you know what I mean? They're not out there in the field. They're not out there doing So you have to be careful. I'm not, you have to tell that story and you have to be able to be careful about the metrics. Metrics are key and important and, and probably to be able to tell your story, especially to your boss and to others, because there's no doubting the data, right? You can't doubt the data, mm -hmm. depending on if it's good quality data. But the point is you have, that is your, your secret weapon, but be careful on how you use that data and it just be able to talk that language is also key. So the data says nobody's doing these things and we need them to do more <laughs> things. And it's okay, look, like I know they're doing the other things. Okay, Chris, get off my back kind of stuff. So you got to watch it. You do. Well, Chris, any closing thought on sales plays community and bringing them together? Look, it's hard, but. Exactly. You gotta try. You gotta try. Look, 
you got to get closer to the business. And in this case, it's the sales organization. And it's probably one of the hardest, I don't know if it's the hardest, but it's pretty hard for community leaders to really think that way, right? I mean, I've had the hardest time and, and I'm just now starting to get my head around it, getting better. But, you know, allow yourself to push into a new direction and collaborate with folks that you never have before, whether it's product, sales, I don't know, marketing or engineering. My next one one day will be engineering, you know, because those guys do a lot of cool stuff, but they seem to be the, le the lead. Like, I want to get them engaged, involved somehow. But the point is, like, you just got to push. And, and the, the, the key is business outcomes and how, do, how does community help? within those kind of areas and, and it's going to help just be creative. That's really it. Yeah. All right. We'll leave it there for today, but lots more to cover and more episodes coming soon. So thank you as always, everybody for listening. Please make sure that you subscribe or follow. We're still getting this podcast off the ground and getting a few followers under our belt would help a lot. If you yep. like the show, please leave us a five-star review. There are a few things that help us get more listeners more than getting in those search results, and those reviews are critical for that. And as always, if you have an idea, something you'd like to talk about, someone you'd like to hear from, questions for us, you can drop us an email. We'll make sure to put a link to that in the show notes. Otherwise, until next time, I'm Nicole Saunders. And I'm Chris Detzel. Thanks, have everyone. Bye. <laughs>